You know, over the past few years, I couldn't help but notice that entertainment industries were starting to sell millennial childhoods back to us. Nintendo Switch Online is getting an N64 expansion, Steve from Blue's Clues came on to give us all words of encouragement to get us through adulthood, and now all this Goosebumps stuff is coming out. What do you think, Salem? I think there's not enough Goosebumps. <laughs> Sappy! What are you doing here? Where are my friends? Oh, they're fine. I locked them in the basement with last year's Halloween candy. You monster. What do you want, you crazy dummy? Just to play this Goosebumps game on the Switch. Yeah, right. As if anyone could make a good Goosebumps video game. You'd be wise to play this with me if you ever want to see your friends again. Okay, okay, okay. I hear you. Let's play. Players beware. You're in for a scare. <laughs> for the younger ones in my audience, born after the best decade ever, Goosebumps started out as a children's horror anthology book series written by R.L. Stein and published by Scholastic in the early 90s. In fact, today is Mr. Stein's 78th birthday, which is why I'm posting this video today. Within a few years, these books became so popular that it led to Scholastic teaming up with Protocol Entertainment to produce a Goosebumps TV show that ran for four seasons. Sure, plenty of the episodes had that 90s cheesiness, but some of them were actually really good adaptations of Stein's best books, such as The Haunted Mask, Welcome to Dead House, and of course, Night of the Living Dummy 3. A decade and a half after the show ended, Sony released a movie simply titled Goosebumps, starring Jack Black and that guy from 13 Reasons Why. It had an interesting concept of the monsters escaping from Stein's books to terrorize the real world, but since it leaned more into the cheesiness of Goosebumps, it wasn't nearly as scary as the show. It was more hilarious, but a lot of the humor was unintentional. I'll always be in your imagination, which is really where I belong. The movie was followed by a sequel called Goosebumps Haunted Halloween in 2018. It was a fun Halloween movie, but overall it had similar issues as the first film, which finally brings us home to this video game, Goosebumps Dead of Night for the Nintendo Switch. <laughs> While this is a Goosebumps game, it draws more from the modern films than the 90s books, particularly with certain creatures who only appeared in Haunted Halloween. It starts with R.L. Stein, once again played by Jack Black, getting sucked into his typewriter because of some magic that Slappy conjured up. Then you appear as a protagonist only known as Twist. I guess it's meant so that the player can feel like it's really them in the game, but it just feels like such an odd choice since it's never explained where your character just appeared from. Unknown origins aside, your goal is simply to find a way to stop Slappy from unleashing monsters all over the world any way you can. A nice and simple premise for a kid's game. The game does have decent graphics, though not mind-blowing. I mean, the colors and shadows are good, it's more the whole game looks rather cartoony. Maybe it's just my nostalgia talking, but I think this game would have been a lot scarier if they had based the art off the practical effects monsters from the show. But I harp on the graphics a bit more because of the load times. Every time this game has to load, it takes a solid minute to do so, and I don't get why. If this was a graphically demanding game, then I could understand that, but it's not! So, why the long load times? Then it got noticeably sluggish frame rate too. It's not the whole time, but it does seem to happen randomly and it's hard to miss. When it comes to the sound design, the music sounds similar to the movies and it's mostly forgettable. The voice acting and sound effects though are actually pretty good. Talking characters deliver good performances, while the monsters actually sound much scarier than the movie counterparts, the graveyard ghoul especially. The first thing to note about Goosebumps Dead of Night is that it's three chapters long and each chapter kind of plays like its own game. As in the first chapter is about finding key objects while hiding from monsters, chapter 2 is more exploration and puzzle solving, and chapter 3 is puzzle solving with some kind of combat. But I quickly noticed something else about the game. The first chapter has you look for pages to complete a book, then trap Slappy back inside. Yep, this is really a remake of a 2016 mobile game called Goosebumps Night of Scares. But as lazy as that fact sounds, it's made in a way that it's actually pretty scary. It uses that run and hide concept found in other horror games in the 2010s. And if any of the monsters catch you, this happens! <laughs> Gah! Ugh. Really slappy, jump scares. This is still a children's series, you know. Yeah, the jump scares can be annoying because they're sudden and loud, but after a while they're more annoying because of the load times. I began to dread the thought of dying just because I knew I'd have to wait a full minute for the game to load again if I died. And that's more the fault of the loading issues. 
Up until that, though, there is some good tension in the chapter throughout hiding from the different monsters seeking you out. And the clown is unique in that sense because it can kill you just from you being in a dark room for too long. So you have plenty of reasons to stay on your toes. But I will say that the gnomes are actually pretty good for relieving that tension. Since they can't kill you, but they are irritating enough that smashing them is just as much fun as you'd expect. Smashy smashy, you're next! Come here you little bastard! Now I have to say the game does at least control well for the most part. I didn't experience any input lag and the controls were easy to remember. There's even a bit of gyro in this game, surprisingly, but it's only actually used once or twice. The only thing I didn't like was how slow your character moves. I get it's supposed to be a spooky game, but even when you're sprinting the movement feels sluggish. That they go from walking to power walking. Is Swiss not shaken up more by the fact that ghouls, a werewolf, witches, and a killer clown are hunting him down? Wouldn't that make him, I don't know, run like hell? Especially if they're as sick of the jump scares as I am? Come on, Twist, move your sorry ass! <laughs> you damn slowpoke. About the puzzles, most of them are pretty grade school in their difficulty, which makes sense for a game rated E10, but a couple in the third chapter were actually quite a bit challenging. I found myself getting stumped a few times on those, and I finished college! So there's another positive to the game. Now like I said, chapter 3 is where horror game combat comes in, and I'm not just talking about picking up small living toys and smashing them, as satisfying as that is. It's in the form of this coil gun that you use to zap monsters, burst them into puffs of smoke, or burst into... gummy bits. I mean, as kitty as this gun is, and as ridiculous as evil gummy bears in general is, I do like combat in my horror games, so there is something to like about this. Unfortunately, we now get to the runtime. As I said, there are three chapters in this game, but each one only took one hour to beat. So I beat this whole game in about three hours. On top of the short runtime, when you beat the final boss, the game just ends. You watch the credits roll, and then... main menu. What?! Come on, I need closure, man! Did Jack Black get set free from the typewriter? Did all the monsters go back inside the books? Who the hell is Twist?! That's the true terror. No, epilogue. <laughs> the game is currently available for $30 on the eShop or $25 in most stores. Given its positives and negatives, I don't recommend you should buy it for that price. It is still available on Gamefly, so it's better to rent it for a weekend. Then if you really want to own it for the challenge mode that's coming around Halloween, try to get it at a much lower price if you can. Okay, I played the game. You satisfied? <laughs> satisfied? You're not done. Now you've got to play Goosebumps the game. That point and click game from three years ago? That's right, buddy. Oh yeah, yeah, no problem. I've got it right here. Not even a hostage crisis could make me play that game! Well, I'm glad that's over. Now to get to some more spooky 90s nostalgia. Castlevania for the N64 is coming up next! While you're writing, be sure to watch my previous Spooky Month reviews like Pumpkin Jack and Luigi's Mansion 3. See you next time!